everyone, wherever you are. I'm Paul Giacomelli, speaking to you from Freiburg in southern Germany. But I'm going to talk to you about the project in Uganda, uh, the Sorlog scheme, where I worked for 10 years until 2012. I've got instructions for time, so I have to go fast um, to give you a flavour of how the project works. And <clears throat> please ask questions later, and I can also point you in the direction uh, for more information should you need it. Right. Um, the background to SPGS. You see those two photos there? The top one is a three-year-old hybrid eucalypt plantation growing for transmission poles in Uganda. The interesting thing there is the entrepreneur knew nothing about forestry when he started before we supported him. And the bottom slide is a community association that the, the project supported growing pines, Pinus caribea there, about 2.5 years old. Um, rotation across about 15 to 20 years. Right, the background, um, the background um, is that it won't be a surprise to those familiar working in Africa. The uh, rampant deforestation and the timber shortage is predicted. And there's been a heavy reliance on wood fuel, of course. A fast growing economy all needs timber. So there was a huge shortage predicted and this project uh, was looking, seeking to encourage the private sector to invest in uh, new planting. And it assumed that there was uh, small growers would need financial and technical assistance. Now, the project's been funded by the European Union since it started um, in 2004, and it's invested $24 million um, to date, with a further $16 million pledged in the next four years. And the, the project supports, as, as you can tell from its name, longer rotations of timber and poles. Right, very quickly, how does the project work? It's a combination of establishment grants and um, technical and business support. The establishment grants on the first uh, side, it pays, the project pays 50% of the establishment costs, which at the time was about $425. So the full establishment cost was $800 would be more today. Uh, but the key thing really is that the grants came, they were performance based standards were clearly written into the contracts. For example, you had to have 80% survival uh, when the program staff visited after three months. The payment was split into three, into three tranches, so we held back some ch the second checks until uh, a few months to make sure to encourage the people to maintain their crops, so quality is the key. There were no funds paid up front. The grants were only uh, paid in retrospect, so the you know, entrepreneurs had to start with their own money. Uh, and we set a minimum of 25 hectares for application, but you could uh, join together to get to that minimum. On the technical side, um, the business side, we had a very strong extension team, which we developed in the first two years with keen young graduates, took them down to South Africa and Swaziland, showed them the best practices, and also we took some of the entrepreneurs down there too to give them the vision of how a, a, a commercial forest sector looks. We ran some very practical training courses ourselves and the team as it was very difficult to find that support outside. We um, published some very practical guidelines after a number of years uh, which had lots of uh, illustrations of good and bad practices that so went down very well. And interesting, we um, developed an accreditation system for nurseries and contractors. Uh, well, that came from, the demand came from the growers themselves, interestingly, so that's been rather successful in building SMEs in the country. And then finally, we supported the development of a Timber Growers Association, knowing that it was going to be uh, important in the future beyond the project. And then lastly, uh, the uh, land Many people uh, started on government land, getting the permits for planting, but increasingly they came on private land. Right, theory of change. Um, here we are, theory of change. We had uh, identified three key areas, three key assumptions. First of all, that the right incentives will attract the private sector to invest. Secondly, rural livelihoods will be improved. And thirdly, that degraded land will be restored. Now, on the basis of those three, you, the results, we've got 50,000 hectares established to date in the scheme. 50,000 hectares, that's about 450 contracted clients. 
Uh, it's been oversubscribed, and the key thing is that beyond the grant, there's another 30,000 hectares being planted, people often coming for technical advice, not, not just the finance. On the rural livelihoods, I think another success story really, 5,000, over 5,000 rural jobs created, more than 1,400 people trained on the courses. There's benefits to a lot of the villages with the corporate social responsibility or the bigger companies. And uh, in terms of capacity building of SMEs, we've seen we've got 42 certified nurseries in Uganda now and 36 small uh, contracting companies going. And then the third one, the degraded land, well, forest reserves which were degraded are being replanted and the trees, because they're quality and fast growing, are obviously storing lots of carbon. So I think uh, very positive results there. And in addition, the solo scheme has raised the profile of forestry. People talking about investing in trees as a pension for their children, uh, it shows you it's really getting the message across. And it's attracting interest from other African countries. We've been last year advising the World Bank, setting a scheme up in Mozambique. There's interest in Ghana and in other countries in Africa too on this. Right, barriers and risks. Um, number one was a challenge uh, for the institutional buy-in. It's been mentioned already a few times. It's been a challenge getting the buy-in despite um, the pro-private sector policies we see in these countries, often there is a resistance to change. Uh, number two, sustainability is an issue because it's grant-led, the projects so obviously it depends on overseas development assistance, the donors to uh, maintain it. And thirdly is the forestry's big uh, bone of contention, which is the long rotations. But the, what we strongly believe is that these risks can be managed by good planning and management. And these risks, I think we're going to talk a bit later, are just are growing the trees, but in particular, the markets for those crops. Right. Um, the working uh, with Unique in many countries, you know, in the last number of years, we're finding that there's a very poor understanding of the value chain, particularly amongst the small growers. And I mean here, uh, product, you know, knowledge of product specification, knowledge of qual quality. Uh, for instance, knowing the markets, knowing the supply demand forecast for products is so important. And we here, we preach this site species market approach where you, it's not just planting trees, but it's getting the market intelligence before you plant the trees. And you can then apply the models that now exist, many growth and economic models, to see if your returns are acceptable for a particular product. So a much more business-like approach to planting, even for small, medium growers. Financing, uh, SPGS obviously proves that the conditional grants supporting small, medium growers can work. Um, you might say it's unsustainable because of the, the, the grant uh, focus, but it actually could be considered very cost-effective from the government's point of view, given that it's attracted 50% of the uh, the input is coming from the private sector. So it's a cost-effective way of a country getting a core plantation establishment which is needed for, you know, to support the economy. Uh, concessional financing, particularly it's like soft loans, um, have been, were considered right at the beginning but the financial institutions didn't want to touch it. So eventually we decided to go on the grant route, down the grant route. And just interesting, those of you who might not know, there is a study underway in Kenya looking at a revolving tree fund for small medium growers, funded by um, DFID and the Nature Conservancy. So that's going to be interesting to follow. And, you know, the, those of you who might not know, the problem obviously with forestry is that banks have experience quite often and they consider it high risk, particularly for the long term nature, even though we think the trees go very fast in the tropics. <laughs> right, conclusions, last slide. Um, Solid scheme has achieved good results on the ground. It's proved a sort of very strong PPP, public-private partnership. It can work if it's carefully planned and well managed. And the, the sort of lessons from SPGS for others, I think, is it took this commercial approach, which was somewhat unusual for small medium growers, but it certainly worked. Um, and it focused on the best practices, best practices for growth and quality. So even for, you know, we preach even for communities, small growers, this is very important. Um, we believe that the approach will have long-term benefits for the sector, but only if there is more support on the value chains and market side. And we're seeing this in many countries. And finally, 
the role of the Timber Growers Association are very important, uh, and I think we will discuss that a bit later. Right, thank you. That's, uh, that's me finished, and I think in time, and there is an applause icon on the list of icons, I'm sorry, I see. Thank you.